Greetings and welcome to the Retro Pixel Castles tutorial! Are you having trouble keeping your villagers alive? Are they dying of starvation? Are they blowing up in the heat? Are they being eaten by rampaging monsters? Well if they are, this tutorial is for you! I will get you through the first few days and into summer! Where hopefully your people die from new and more ingenious ways, rather than simple basic stuff. Now first off, the map you see may be a little bit basic, your version you can zoom in and it's more high definition, but I didn't have time to wait, so to start with, each of these dots is a different area you can jump into. Are we picking black sands over here, just to show you how to get into it. Each one is different, you can tell what the zone is by where it is. Now to tell how many villages you've got, go over here. It shows you your villagers in limbo. You can go see how many in the world, so you can go from place to place and how many all together. Also the same with resources. That's very important if you want to pull people out of a zone into another one. But first, let's get straight into it. So we're off into our chosen map. At the very beginning, there are three or four resources you need. Technically there's three, but the fourth one is very important later on. So, click your village center and have a look around on the map. See what you can find, see what you like. The resources you need are wood, food, and stone. See this stone is important for buildings, wood is very important for most of your buildings, and food you need to survive. The fourth resource is crystals. You don't need that till later on, but we'll work with it anyway. So I'm going to put my building down here, and we'll get to work. What happens is your people will spawn in, along with some resources. You click on the building and assign people to it. If you do not assign them, they do not build. That is how it works and that's how simple it is. So assign as many as you can to building. As you can see, they've picked up the resources and there they go. They will just keep on building until things happen. Now you start off with some resources, but you will need more. So the builders are the only ones who can do this. You will assign this. See this? I'm assigning woodcutting. And I'm also assigning stone. That will mean woodcutters and miners will start mining this stuff because you've assigned it, but you don't have any woodcutters or miners. But builders can grab the resources they need directly from the deposits to make the buildings. So they will grab the wood and the stone to build, which is good because you'll be needing them to build buildings. As you can see right now, buildings are completely shut off because this is not built. You need your village centre alive to build things. Now while we're waiting, let's just quickly go over here and prove something. See this? This is Limbo. It says I have three people left and 84 resources. The number will change for each time you play through it, but it's very important. If you find a Cullis Gate, which is this glowy thing, where is it? This glowy thing here, you can pull people out during the day. It's people! See that? I've now pulled out three more people from Limbo. If you don't want them here and want to go to another area on the map, you can click on them and drop them back in. See that? We don't want them right now. You see this magic flying around it? The more you pull out people in a short amount of time, the likelier it is for it to explode, catch fire, or die. So be careful of that. So now we have the village centre built. As you can see, the build menu is available. We have three main buildings we need at the very beginning. We need housing. We need tents. Your people need to live inside tents because they get happier inside a tent. That is annoying. If you want to delete a building, go over here. Click on this button and click on it but they get happier inside buildings. They mate inside buildings. Yes, they mate a lot and also have children inside there. They get it on a lot of the time inside buildings and level up doing so. They also regain their health inside buildings, allowing them to recoup from damage. And the most important thing during summer, they don't get heat stroke and die and during winter, they don't get frostbite and die. So make sure you have houses. The other two main buildings you will be needing are, if I go to harvesting, you will need a lumber shack. You need a lot of wood at the beginning. So get a lumber shack down quickly. You also, going back to the farming section, need a farm. Not a small one, let's go for a large farm. You need farms or your people will die in large numbers. During the summer, things barely grow. During the winter, nothing grows. You need food or your people will starve to death. What are the common occurrences? That's probably how you died in the first place. It's how I died. So, as you can see, they're working really hard. They're grabbing resources directly from the trees and from the rocks to build what they need. That is fine. If you want to change priority, you click on this building here. It shows you what order they're being built in. Let's put up the lumber shack. And the farm. As you can see, the farm is first, then the lumber shack. If you want to help them out, you can grab resources with the grab tool. See this? I can grab resources directly. Just pick it up, drop it on the building. 
See that? I'm helping out. You can do that to the wood, to the food. Let's grab some food. To the stone. And to the crystals. As you can see, there's a little yellow bar that shows how much mana I'm using. If I go over the other ones, it will show you how much mana they use. As you can see, different sizes. And obviously the red ones means I need more mana. To grow more mana, you need a happy morale. If I click on this guy, as you can see he currently has 37 happiness. He is not very happy because he's outside. He has no house. He has probably been fighting lately and bleeding everywhere. So if you want your people happy, they need to have a house, they need to have food, and they need to not be dying by hunger, by starvation, by frostbite, by sunburn, by being eaten, by their friends being eaten. Basically, make sure they have a happy life as much as they possibly can this horrible, horrible hellhole. Now I'm going to quickly just let this go until this building is complete and that building is complete. But as you can see, crystals and food are completely blocked off. They are blocked off until the building design for them has been made. So once the farm is built, I can go for food. We'll be back when we can have food. Okay, we are back in. I've had my food. They're about to get theirs. As you can see, the farm is basically complete apart from them hitting with a hammer so it builds. If the builders weren't being attacked by lots and lots of monsters. Now, the monsters during the day are pretty weak and attack in small groups, they just slowly path to you. At night, it says midday, keep an eye on that, at night they will attack you in large numbers. At night they get very aggressive and come in groups. So be wary of the night time, but during spring you should be fine, at summer you may be in trouble. Now, the farm is complete, let's get our people. So, I can't put anyone in there right now because there's no one available. So we'll have to remove them from the village centre. Let's remove six people and put them into the farms. As you can see over here, the food has been done. Assign the food, go here, and your farmers will start grabbing food from here and taking it into the farm. What happens is, they plant it, it will slowly grow. It will start off as one little dot and grow to two dots. Once that has happened, they will take the food to your houses and then to your village centre eventually. For every house you have, they will fill it up. This one can hold 12 food, the other two buildings can hold different amounts of food. Do not have any housing without any people in it, because they will fill it up with food, and your people won't be able to eat it. So don't have five houses unused with 20 food inside them with all your people starving to death. Now as you can see, they're currently grabbing the food and planting it, while whining about lack of housing. So we will leave them to it and go over to our lumber shack. As you can see, Dad needs people too. Same thing, can't assign anyone. Go to here, remove six people and put them on. You want to prioritise at the very beginning farming and your lumber shack. You need your lumber up as fast as possible and you need your food up as fast as possible. So make sure you've assigned a lot of people to this. For every time your builders have to go grab the wood themselves from the forest, it will slow them down. So make sure they're getting enough of everything. If you do not have this, you will die badly. Now, how can we help our people survive, say, during the night time? You have three different defensive buildings. You have the Fireball Tower. You have the Bow Tower. And you have the Sling Tower. I am going to go over here. Here's the Pause Building and Pause the Sling Tower and the Fireball Tower. Your early line of defence is the Bow Tower. Your mid-line defence is the Sling Tower. And your high-end level defence is the Firebolt Tower because of what they need to build them. So as you can see, this needs 24 rocks, this needs 12 wood and 8 rocks, this needs 24 boards, refined material, 8 crystals, there's the crystals, and chrysolite, which is refined crystals to build, which you won't have access of in the beginning. Now each of these towers needs some kind of ammo, so I'll show you them. If you go to manufacturing, you will find the rock tumbler, which I'll build here, and the boyers. Now the boyers will turn wood into arrows. The rock tumbler will turn rocks into... The rock tumbler will turn rocks into rock stones. The rock stones will be in piles of 10, one rock for 10, into the sling tower. The boyers will turn one wood into 20 arrows, one stack of 20, for your bow towers. You of course need to assign people from the village centre by removing them and putting them inside. They will then grab wood from usually your lumber shack and take it over. Now your rock tumbler will take rocks from your mining facilities. We don't have any yet, let's put one down and show you the price. 
the crystal harvestry is obviously for the crystals, the mining facility is bigger and requires 64 wood, 64 stone, it requires a lot of resources to get up and running but still important for mid-level gameplay. For the very beginning you'll be relying heavily on your lumber shack. Okay so what we're going to wait for now is the bow tower to become active and the boyers to become active. What will happen during that time is night will fall so let's get more defences up and running. We are going to get attacked and heavily so we're going to put down a wall. Probably gonna look better than mine but I'm just quickly doing it and my mouse is terrible so bring it across like that. Enemies will path around the walls when they're built. If you completely seal yourself off, the enemies will go through your walls. If you leave a hole, say, let's put a hole here and everything's sealed off, they will walk around here and through. So what you'll want to do is have defensive towers. If you have two bow towers here, or three or four have loads of towers, they will be firing outside of this wall as the enemies walk around and inside. So what you want to do is make some kind of realistic maze, like this. See this? Now we do this, no enemies can come from this side, they have to go round too. And before you know it, you have multiple layers, see that, they're going round and round, you have towers continually firing, and you have powerful defences. So see this, they have to take a long way to get in, of course it's a long way for your people to get out as well. Another couple of things you need to know in the name of defence, as night has now fallen. Walls will block your line of influence. If I pick a building randomly, you see the green? That's your line of influence. It gets grown by putting buildings down. I put a building down there and that gets built, it will push this out. Also guard towers are going to assign people to defence. They go around and beat things up. So if you completely wall yourself off, you can't expand past the walls until you put a hole in the walls. Or the enemy puts a hole in the walls. As the days go by, the enemy gets stronger. As you can see, this is a level 1 zombie. You get more numerous enemies, more aggressive enemies, and more high leveled enemies, which makes them stronger health-wise and damage-wise. Very important to know. You need to make sure when you have your boyers up that they're building enough arrows to supply all of your towers, and they don't run very fast. You need to make sure you have enough food, as you can see that guy supplying food directly to a house. These things are all very important. Another thing to know, there are three types of walls, if we go to them. There is the wood walls, which are made out of wood. There's the stone walls, which are called sturdy, made out of stone. And then there is the actual stone walls, which are made out of refined stone. So, the way the towers work with walls. The firebolt tower will fire over the wood wall basic and the wall sturdy. It cannot fire over the wall stone. The bow tower can fire over the wood wall basic, the wall sturdy, and cannot fire over the wall stone. And the sling tower cannot fire over any of these. Sling towers roll their balls along the floor, so be wary of that. If you build the towers and you build the walls, you can shoot over it only with these two. And if you build the wall stone, nothing can shoot. It's a good way of completely sealing off an area so towers can't shoot. Obviously you only need one layer. So let's get into the final tips just to make sure everything is understood. The lumber mill turns wood into boards. The stone cutter turns rocks into stone. You will need people inside those buildings to gather the resources from the resource gathering buildings. You will need farmers and many farmers. You will need to continuously keep on selecting new food. You will need to continuously keep selecting new food because they will be pulling the food up until it grows back. You need to make sure you have farmers otherwise you will die during summer. You need to make sure you have enough houses for all your people to find out that. You look here, I have 33 people living in 36 housing slots. Make sure the number on the left is always lower than the number on the right. And the most important one of all. Have a few of your people idling so they can meet all the time and maybe give birth to more children. You need children. But you also need to make sure you're heavily fortified. Right now the enemy can come at me from three different sides. I want to wall this off so I'm going to do this. As you can see, the enemy can now not get to me there, and then do this. The enemy can't get to me from this side to attack me, they have to path round. You want to make sure you have walled off everywhere you don't want to be. The enemy cannot path through rocks and stone, so as you can see, now this wall is over here, here, and here. The only way they can get into my village when it is done will be through this gap here. But however, they can path through 
food. So to make sure that doesn't happen, you have to destroy terrain. Button, see this? They will now destroy this terrain. And when that is destroyed, I can put a wall there. So make sure you wall all the enemies out and have defensive towers hitting them as they go past. If you do not have a wall, you will die in the higher levels. Now look at death, just to prove a point. So, on that note, make sure you follow these tips to win the early game. This is just a brief early tutorial. Build houses. Build farms. Build boyers and make sure you have towers. Make sure your lumber shack is making enough wood to build your buildings, supply your boyers with enough wood to make arrows so you can defend your towers. And for the love of everything that you enjoy, make sure you have a wall up with some way for the enemy to attack you or they will just tear through your walls and eat everything you like. If you follow these tips and follow this advice, hopefully I will see you in winter. Because winter is coming, my friend. And if you are not prepared, you will die. This has been the Retro Pixel Castle's early game tutorial. I have been the Fallen Shogun. If you wish to see more on how to go through the game, there are some Let's Plays up there and I will link two of mine at the end. Otherwise, I will see you on the forums and I will see you on the battlefield. Ciao for now, people. Bye bye. Next tip, thank you for all the tips. Grab healing dissolve. Safely back to the village, banish, spotlight. How do I limbo people again? Oh well, we'll leave that for now, we're slowly growing. Things are getting epic. Dinosaurs. So we're at a very low stage, where even a bloody buffalo might be an issue. I'm not saying it's going to be, but it might. There we go, screw you! Missiles! 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 Whew. So there we go. One